What's up my friends, Nick Arapkalis here. Welcome to today's video. I'm gonna show you how to become an expert YouTube advertiser. No matter if you're just starting, you're brand new, or you have a little bit of experience, I wanna take you from where you are to expert YouTube advertiser. And I know that's a bold claim, but if you stick with me to the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. As you can see on this page, I've generated a decent amount of results, spent a decent amount of money, over $7,500, generated over you know, a thousand conversions, that's leads and sales combination, over 4 million impressions and almost 25,000 clicks. So you can see I have had some experience with this type of stuff and I wanna show you my process because uh, there's a lot of different routes on how to do this. I, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars learning this type of stuff and I wanna teach it to you guys. I've seen a lot of people on YouTube that have no idea what they're talking about. I've seen some people that do but their processes are a little different than mine. So I wanted to share my perspective so that you can just pick and choose whatever route that you wanna go, okay? So that is pretty much the gist, guys. Make sure and subscribe to the channel. And here was the other thing, is that you need to take action after this video, okay? You have to go out there and start placing ads after this video. It does you no good to watch this video and say that was a cool video and then just do nothing. And you'd be surprised how many people do that. It's unfortunate, but the reason I tell you that is because all advertising is different. There's different interests, there's different targeting, there's different everything. There's different algorithm, like the algorithm goes one way sometimes, one way the other time. And it's just, there's so much that goes into it, okay? And the only way that you're truly gonna know if something works is if you go out there and test it and get feedback and you get data back and then you can optimize that data and keep on moving forward. That's the only way and that's the best way that I've gotten good at this is actually going out there and testing it, getting data and then making adjustments. Okay, so I wanted to get that out of the way. Again, make sure and subscribe if you like this type of content because we always create this type of content and we're gonna continue to make even more. Okay, that's the gist guys. Sorry for that long winded intro but let's get into this. The first thing that you need to do if you're trying to generate leads and sales inside of your business, if you're not, I'm not sure why you'd be advertising, but just have to make sure we're all on the same page. You have to set up a few things. The first thing is you have to set up some conversions. So you come over here, you click on tools and settings, and you click on conversions, and then you click on add new. So the main one that I do, and again, most of this training that I'm gonna be showing on this video is the way I've done it. Obviously, I can t only can teach on the stuff that I've really done, but I will show you kind of more step-by-step -step on the general stuff, but I'm just kind of, it's gonna be more tailored to what I do. So mostly what I do is just website conversions. I have not really messed around with any of these other type of things. So I click on website conversions, and this will depend on if you're trying to generate leads or you're trying to generate sales or just whatever you're tracking, okay? So obviously if you're trying to generate sales, you would do a purchase. If it was a lead, lead, pretty simple, right? So we'll do test lead. And then here is where usually what I've done. And any, any point you, I strongly recommend you come in here and check this stuff out because they give some pretty good descriptions as well and help you understand what's going on. You're not gonna get like all the nitty gritty details, but if you're ever concerned or not sure what things mean or anything, they usually have pretty dis good descriptions. So what I do, if it's a lead, then I would just leave it at one. If it's a, you know, a sale, I would, ever, I would put it whatever the cost of the sale is. So come down here and then if you're doing leads, they recommend that you do every, or excuse me, purchases. And if you're doing leads, then you just do every one. Keep it at a 30 day window, one day uh, conversion window, and include conversions, yes, and the attribution model is the last click. That's how I usually do it, okay? Click, create and continue, and this is where you would want to install these, you have to install a code on your website in order to actually track this stuff. Now you can use Google Tags Manager, and that is, um, probably a little bit more efficient, but it is a little bit more complex. So the best thing I can recommend right away is just use the install your tag yourself, whether it's you or your designer, coder, whatever. Um, but it's not too hard, especially if you're using something like lead pages or click funnels. Basically what you need to do is you need to put this code on the tracking conversion area on every page within your funnel, and then you would have to use the snippet right here on the specific page. So if you're going after a lead and a, and a lead is signified by reaching the thank you page, you would put this event snippet on the thank you page, but you'd also put this code on the opt-in page and the thank you page. Hopefully that makes sense. Not, 
like I said, not too complex, but yeah, just wanted to make sure that's all understood. So once you've set up your test lead action, you should be good to go. Um, once you put everything, you know, all the codes in there, all the tags in there, all that. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we click on tools and settings and we wanna come into linked accounts, especially if you're gonna be retargeting any type of your YouTube audience, whether if you're building up your YouTube audience. So you click on linked accounts and again, this is mostly just for YouTube. So we click on your details and then you click on add one and basically you would just put in your YouTube channel and then you would select it and um, then you make sure obviously you have to have control of the YouTube channel to actually confirm it but once you're there you are good to go then lastly what you want to do is the audience manager and again this comes down to like retargeting your YouTube audience whether um, you have website visitors you want to retarget your website visitors so you click on here, you can see I have a bunch, there's a lot of YouTube channels. So you click on that and website visitors. Here are pretty self-explanatory. You just need to put the URLs. Um, you can do people that hit this page, but not this page or this page and, and this page or like all that kind of stuff. Um, it's not too complicated if you come in here and just check it out. The other thing that you can do is your YouTube users. So this is cool. You can do a lot of different things. Viewed any video from your channel, certain videos, any video, as an ad from the channel, viewed certain videos as ads, subscribed to the channel, visited the channel page, liked any video from a channel, added as any video to a playlist, commented on any video, or shared any video. So that's pretty cool. So you can really segment that down. And then obviously once you have your YouTube channel linked, you just come in here and click it, and boom, you're all set to go. Then here's the other thing. Um, this is kind of a drawback. This is the one thing I'm not crazy about with Google is you used, and you used to be able to do this, you upload like a customer list and then you could even create like lookalikes off of that. But for whatever reason, uh, they changed it. You have to spend like $50,000 before you can start uploading your, your customer base. I don't really understand why, but that is, that is what they've done, okay? So that's, that's really the gist, guys. So now that we have all of that set up, you're good to go and you can start running some ads, start setting up some campaigns. So let's come back over here, come over to campaigns, and we'll click on create new campaign. There's a lot of different objectives that you can go after. Um, people say that leads is a really good one to go after. If you're sending, you know, obviously trying to get webinar registrants, opt-ins for a free lead magnet or whatever. If you're sending people directly to a sales page, then this would be probably ideal. Um, brand awareness and reach, people say that that's really good for retargeting, especially if the audience is a little bit smaller. But what I've actually found is the best, the best strategy that I've used, and I haven't really tested with too much of the other ones just because I know that this is working for me, is create a campaign without a goal's guidance. And I don't, it kind of, it's kind of weird, but that's just what's worked the best for me, okay? So we click on that, we click on video, obviously. And then, this is actually something a little bit newer. I hadn't seen this too much, but again, I just like to customize my stuff myself. Um, I I'll probably will start testing with drive conversions, and I will start testing with these different ones as I get a lot more into this stuff. But yeah, that's kind of the route I go. I just like customizing my own stuff. So that's, <laughs> I know it's kind of a little backwards, what a lot of other people teach, but I can't really argue the results that I've had, okay? So, obviously, you just put in whatever campaign name, total budget. Excuse me, I don't usually do total budget. I, I do daily budget. So, you know, you want to start out lower, um, usually like five, ten bucks, just to test stuff out, and then you can start ramping stuff up. That's kind of the cool thing with Google is that with Facebook and Instagram, it's very hard to scale. Like they make it so difficult to scale. Like you have to duplicate ad sets and like you can't touch the ad sets that are working. If you do, it gets all thrown out of whack. And uh, yeah, it's, it's complex. Like I said in the beginning, it's, it's not as simple as here. But here, like if you have a winning campaign and you are spending $10, then you're like, okay, boom, I wanna spend $100 and you usually get typically pretty similar results. Obviously, whenever you scale, you're gonna lose a little bit of um, your effectiveness. But you know, it's, it's pretty cool that it stays pretty on point. So the bidding strategy with 
a campaign that has no objective is usually the cost per view, and that's what I do. Typically, I take off video partners on Display Network. I just like to keep people in YouTube and YouTube video, or search results and YouTube videos. Languages, obviously, I keep it English. I don't really want to target anyone that doesn't speak English. I, with locations, what I do is I do the big five. So United Kingdom, United Kingdom, United States, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada. Okay, so they call those the big five. So I won't type those all in because it just takes a little while. But again, Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, big five. I don't mess. I really don't mess around with inventory type. You can kind of look in here if you want to exclude content. If you want to do expanded inventory, limited inventory, I just typically stay with standard inventory. I don't really mess around with excluded content, but if you don't want stuff to be on any profanity and role, rough language or sexual suggestive content, which I mean, yeah, definitely makes sense. Um, you don't really want your ads on that type of stuff. I get it. Um, but again, I just haven't really messed around with it too much. Okay. And then, yeah, excluded types and labels, whatever, just come and check it out. Um, ad group. This is like the ad set like in Facebook, where it would be the ad group, you just name it, test group. And here's the thing with YouTube, Google, opposed to what is with Instagram and Facebook, is that you can do a bunch of different ad sets within the same campaign and it, and it usually segments, or it does segment everything. Within Google and YouTube, because Google and YouTube, I didn't really fully explain that, but they're the same, obviously. You want to create basically a campaign for each type of targeting that you're doing. And that's where the ad group is. That's where your targeting is. That's that is. So if you put a bunch of different targeting in your ad groups and you create multiple ad groups, they're going to start favoring specific ad groups in the campaign. And then like, so say if you're doing, and I'll explain this more here in a second, but if you're doing keywords on one and then you're doing placements on one, whichever one's working better, YouTube's gonna start throwing more money into that ad group instead of this ad group, which is kind of weird, but it's not that big of a deal. Just create multiple campaigns as if they were ad sets like that you would do in YouTube, or excuse me, you would do it in Facebook, okay? So you can do demographics. I don't mess around with these too much, but um, you know, if you are running a business where you're only targeting females or males, then I would probably do that. I, don't, I wouldn't mess around too much with the ages or this. I've found that it's not even that accurate and everything that I've heard, it's not even that accurate as of right now. So I wouldn't mess around with that too much unless you're really just targeting you know, one gender over the other. Audiences, this is where you can do your retargeting and this is where like your, you know, your YouTube list or um, your website visitors, stuff like that where you can retarget them. And again, a lot of my successful campaigns have come from retargeting, whether that's just my YouTube visitors or my website visitors whatever it is, okay? So obviously you have to have some art, you have to already have some traction, you already have to have website visitors or YouTube subscribers to already actually target those people, okay? So that is that, okay? The next one is uh, you can target people based on just who they are, okay? Parental status, marital status, education, homeowner status, you can, what their interests are, you know, food dining, I mean, there's so many different things, travel, all that kind of stuff in here. Uh, what they're actively researching or planning, this is very good because, you know, if people are in the search of stuff and they want to find you, then you just have to place ads so that they can find you. So a lot of stuff in here. Again, you just have to kind of come in and then test things out and see if it works, check the numbers and stuff like that, and how they've interacted with your business. And again, this is just what I uh, mentioned before is website visitors and YouTube users and if you have any if you have spent fifty thousand dollars on the platform they will let you do um, customer list or lead list so and then the next thing and again like so if you were doing a retargeting campaign or you were just doing some type of audience you would want to create another campaign you wouldn't want to create um, more keywords you wouldn't want to create more topics placements in that same ad group or another ad group you would just want to create another campaign just to be safe and that's what i've noticed that is the best results keywords are also really good i've had some good results with this the thing that i will mention with this obviously you need to do your keyword research find out what your customers are typing in into the the platform but what i like to do is doing either putting them in brackets or quotations. So 
Here we do how to get abs or how how to get abs. Oops, abs. So the reason you want to put it in this is it's an exact search. So people that are typing exactly that, that's when your ad would come up. Um, this one, I forget exactly what it's called, but um, relative or something like that. It's it's basically very like very similar things to this. But if you just put in how to get abs, it literally could take like anyone, like it just could take abs. And if someone types in abs at any point, then your ad could potentially come up. And that's not very targeted. So I always recommend that you just do Either these. I would, if the audience is big enough, if enough people are typing this out, I would just stick with this to see what the results are like, and then I would go with this. But I would never really doing the broad. Uh, okay, so that is keywords, topics, just a lot of different topics, people that are interested in specific subjects, and then also placements. And this one's really cool. This is actually one of my favorites as well. Is you can advertise on people's channels. So if you want to advertise, let's just say on, let's try uh, Kino Body. It's a fitness company. Um, not sure why it's not in here. Greg, that's the guy, Greg O'Gallagher. I don't know why this isn't coming up, but we can just try and find something else if not. Yeah, it's a big channel. I'm not sure why that's not coming up. So maybe it might be because he doesn't allow advertising on his channel. That could be one thing. But let's just type in mine. Let's see if mine comes up. I know I let advertising on my channel. Yeah, so basically you just boom. boom. I mean, potentially, if you wanted to, you come in here and say, hey, I want to advertise on next channel. If your audience is very similar to mine, if you wanted to do that. Um, Relatively speaking, my audience isn't that big. You'd probably want to go after a little bit bigger audience that has like you know, 50,000, 100,000 subscribers, but um, you can always test, all right? So that's really cool. Uh, it is very, very effective. You can advertise on specific videos. So if you wanted to advertise on specific videos on a channel, you could certainly do that. Um, you could set uh, websites, but I've only, I've really only messed around with YouTube channels. And just to kind of wrap this up a little bit too, is like the best things that I've had results with is placements and keywords and retargeting. Those are my top three favorite ones. And obviously you need an audience if you're doing any type of retargeting, but those are very, very effective. The bidding, typically what I've done, honestly, all I've done is done just 10 cents. <laughs> and typically like what I'm paying usually is like three to four cents. That's usually all I do. So now here's where you put your your actual video in. So let's go grab a video off of YouTube. Just throw this in and show you what it is all about. So let's come in. I was doing some research on comedy the other day because I was given a speech on comedy. So um, that's why that video popped up. But let's come back here. We'll paste that in. And I would really only recommend in-stream ads. That's where the most effective ads are. I don't know. I thought that in discovery ads where like people search stuff out and then your video pops up right there. I thought that would be effective, but I just noticed that people don't really watch a whole lot of the video. And people do watch a lot of the in-stream videos. So in-stream videos, just to clarify, are videos that pop up right before you're about to watch a video. So let's see if, well, yeah, prime example right here. This is an ad, okay? This is an ad. You can see that you can click on here and go to their website. If you want, um, I'm gonna do this real quick. Okay, so then your ad will also come, pause that. You, people have potential to click on their ad right there. So even though if, even if they skip it, whoops. Even if they skip the ad, so now we're on the actual video, you still always have a chance to click on the, the button here and still go to their website, okay? So in-stream ads get very long retention People are watching a lot of the ad for whatever reason. People don't don't mind just ads just just too much just yet. Okay, it's it's not gonna be always, but that for this case right now, people are watching a, a lot of the video. Okay, so let's come back to this. And so in stream ads again, what I would recommend 
and basically you just put your URL here wherever you're sending people again it should be like an opt-in page or a webinar registration or if you again if you're just trying to get sales then maybe you're sending them to uh, your page your sales page whatever it is okay um, you can also put a call to action is what I was just talking about here is that if you want this button then you want to do what I just showed you where you did the call to action button and then you can you know put uh, sign up click here obviously whatever you want to put your ad copy but this is how it looks on mobile obviously you already saw how it looks on desktop but here is how it looks on mobile and that's where a lot of your traffic is um, and that's where the cheapest traffic is is mobile stuff so um, you can do an uploaded image or you can just do an auto generated channel banner let's see what they did I think I think they created this banner so either way I don't really mess around with creating any banner I just let I just let YouTube do it all and then you just put the ad you just put ad name right there and boom you are all set to go one thing I will show you as well as I just mentioned is that the cheapest traffic is going to be from mobile traffic okay and so where was that delivery methods where is it no you can check it um, somewhere else demographics where was this I usually do it on after I actually create the ad so I don't I always have it on here but I mean that's it like basically you have everything to go you save and continue continue to campaign and then you come into if you want to just do mobile come into settings and then come down into where is this thing additional settings there we go so devices all elegi eligible devices so if you wanted to just go with mobile which I said is the cheapest traffic you want to take off computers tablets TV screens and just stick with mobile click save and boom you are all set to go and then from there it's just a matter of whether you did um, keywords audiences it's basically going to show you it's going to show you like how many conversions what's the conversion rate how much the cost per conversion and so like here's the keyword so like this one might since this is a little bit more targeted this one might get like four dollar leads and this one might get six dollar leads therefore if you're not okay with six dollar leads or maybe it was like ten dollars something crazy it was like fourteen dollar leads then obviously you would just pause that and just keep running with that one okay so it's the same thing over here if you, if you had an audience in there you can always check like what was the cost per conversion how much of the video were they watching so you can look at the data and that's what we talked about in the beginning of this video you have to create ads so that you can come back and look at the data to see what is really working okay to give you kind of just a brief overview on on what really makes a good video ad it's not too complicated okay I'll give you two specific things that I really want you to hammer home on here is you just need to call out your target demographic right in the beginning of the video that goes into play on who you're actually targeting know exactly who you're targeting but you want to really call them out so if you're talking to someone that like your target market is people who want to get ripped abs you'd say hey are you looking to get ripped abs like just ask them the damn question right then and there grab their attention right there and what's cool with YouTube is that they can hit that skip button oh it's not on there anymore maybe we can try it again yeah so they can hit the skip button once it hits five seconds you they can hit skip okay so if they hit skip within the first five seconds or they actually what is it if only if they watch 30 seconds of your video or the whole thing okay they have to watch 30 seconds of the video or if your video is less than 30 seconds then they have to watch the whole thing for you to actually get charged so that's what's really cool with YouTube okay so they can skip it and if they do skip it that you, they, you don't get charged okay but the thing I was getting to is that just call those people out so that people know if they should skip the ad or not so you say hey you could even go to extent and be like hey if you if you're fine not getting ripped abs then then hit the skip button like you could just tell them that just just be very direct and give the call to action and 
you don't have to worry about having like really short videos because people are used to watching long videos on YouTube. So you don't have to be like trying to squeeze out something in like 15 seconds. You can make videos like usually like a good range is like two to five minutes that what I've noticed is a really good range. And then at the end, what I recommend too is having a space at the end, like 10, 15 seconds, give them time to actually click on your ad because let me just see if we can bring it up. And again, see this one is only 30 seconds. Okay. So if they watches, if someone watches set or they watch 27 seconds and then they skip it, this advertiser is not getting charged, which is really, really cool. But here's the thing I want to show you is that when it gets to the end, the ad ends sometimes, sometimes it has a little end thing. So sometimes it has this, a lot of times it has this, but just to, just to be careful, what I like to do is, oops, another small, one. these are more like big branding ads, but put like a little buffer at the end, just like a little video that says, Hey, click here, click here, click here. Because what can happen sometimes is if someone is watching your ad and all of a sudden there's no way it just goes into the next ad or it goes into the next video and they're trying to click something and then they don't know where to click and then they're just confused and they don't go to your website even when they wanted to click. Okay. So that's really it guys. Hopefully I gave you a lot of value. Hopefully that made sense. Again, I would say some of the biggest takeaways is one, go start implementing this stuff. Okay. You have to, so you can get some data and figure out what's working for you. Go optimize, figure out where the best conversions are happening and then scale up from there. Okay. The next thing is the best, the best targeting that I recommend is one retargeting. If you can, that's going to be prime, especially if you treat your audience, right? Which you should be. The second one is that you should be targeting keywords, but be specific with your keywords, do it either in the brackets or the parentheses. And then the third one is, uh, placements on, on channels. Okay. That's what I'd recommend on channels that are relevant to your niche. Okay. And then just, you know, if once you find a winner, scale up, kill the duds, close those off. And yeah, uh, the other thing is that if you're doing, if you want to do different targeting like placements and you, and you want to do keywords and you want to do, um, retargeting, create different campaigns for each one of those. Don't put keywords, campaign or keywords, placements, and retargeting all in the same campaign because it, YouTube's just going to find the one that's working the best and deliver all the results to that, deliver all the traffic to that. And therefore you won't really know what's, what really is working and what's not because YouTube's just kind of taking control over. Okay. That's the gist guys. Hopefully that made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. I know this video was probably a bit longer than most of my videos, but I figured I'd make a long in-depth video so that you guys can get a lot of value out of it. And therefore you can go out there and take action, get results, optimize, and just really scale up. Okay guys, thank you for watching this video. If you do enjoy this, make sure and subscribe to the channel. If you are not already subscribe, like I said, share it with somebody else. If you think they can get some value out of it and you know, smash that like button down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.